Hello everyone, welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Today we will talk about the usage model. The usage model, as you may recall, I have introduced when we talked about artifact models as the one where you describe the interaction between a user and the system. And we have two parts that belong to the usage model. The first one is the use case overview diagram. And the second one are the use case scenarios. The first one, the use case overview diagram, is a standard UML diagram. And for the use case scenarios, we can use the Coburn template. So this one is UML. And this one will do according to the Coburn template. The use case overview diagram is also known informally as the bubble diagram. And this is what it looks like. We have a user. And this user is representative for a user group. We have the system boundary. System under development. This boundary is the system scope. And then in here, we have the use cases. And then we have a straight line from a user to a use case that denotes that this user can carry out that use case. There could also be a different user representing a different user group over here that may, may be a different user group called admin. And the admin can, for example, add user accounts. So we will add a different user if there are several user groups for our system. And each representative user will only be linked to the use cases that they can perform. Now the admin may, depending on how you design your system, also be able to perform all of the others. Or you can say, no, I don't want the admin to like uh, get chaos into everything. I'm going to require them to log in as an admin to carry out their admin activities, and I will require them to log in as a normal user when they want to do the other normal tasks that any other user can perform. So that's a choice of your system design. There are a couple of special cases. There is an includes and an extends. Oops, it shouldn't go in here. Includes other task. And if you write includes, that means this one is always carried out when this one is performed. And there is another option that is called extends. Other task two, which means that this use case can be performed in addition, but it doesn't have to be. So extends denotes an optional to carry out. And this one with the includes will always be carried out. So that's our overview diagram. Now, if we pass that on to our system developers and say, here, start programming the thing, they would say, well, you, you're not giving me enough. I know 
the admin should be able to add user accounts, but I have no idea what the interaction with him in the system actually looks like. So therefore, we detail this with the use case scenarios. So we have one use case scenario per use case from the overview diagram. And this template is going to specify a couple of meta information items that I'm going to skip for now, but you will find them in the template online. But what it describes in detail is the scenario main steps. Mm, this is an S, very clearly so, just so you know. The scenario main steps and that starts with some kind of trigger. For example, user clicks on something. Then number two is the system response. Number three is then again user performs the next step. System response by. So I'm making this here very explicit because what is important is that for every user step, you want to write down the system response. If you note it down, well, first the user clicks on new profile, then the user clicks on add my picture, then the user selects their hobbies. Then we have no idea what's actually going on because we only see one side. We only see the user input, but we don't see what's coming back from the system. So nobody would be able to implement it solely upon what the user does. So we need to specify both sides. So every single time when you describe a scenario, I want to see user does this, system responds like that, user does this, system response like that. That way, it is very unambiguous what the interaction is supposed to look like for the future. And you'll get to try that out.